Jeff Barnes, thank you very much for uh, joining us, uh, Delaware Camera Conversations. Uh, so my introduction of you is just going to be uh, you. I've known you for close to 20 years at this point. Uh, I definitely admire your your uh, photography, and uh, yeah, you've you've done some pretty cool things. And love to hear your background and how did you get started in photography? What what was your initial attraction to it? What what started you down the path? Um, I think both of my grandparents were photog well amateur photographers. My grandmother on my dad's side was, and my grandfather on my mother's side both were like amateur photographers that, you know, basically did it for fun. My grandmother used an old 126 camera, which I actually still have. This was hers. So this is kind of what I got started with, I guess you could say. And my grandfather used more of the traditional 35 millimeter film cameras. But I got to play around with both of those as a 10, 11, 12 year old kid. Very cool. And so what, what was the first camera that was yours? First camera that was mine? have that too. <laughs> Kodak disc. Four nice. It was the future. You got uh, 15 pictures that were tiny negatives that were weren't that great but when I was 1984 Christmas 84 I got this from my father for Christmas and that's kind of what started it. Um, the funny part is the, the 126 camera from my grandmother took better pictures than this camera did. This was the new technology, but the negative was so small that it wasn't as good as the big, almost 35 millimeter negative of the 126. So um, she gave me this camera and I actually use this a lot too. So between these two, film cameras, Instamatic is where it all kind of started. Okay, so, so that's you as a preteen, entering teenager. At what point did you start getting a little bit more serious? And, and uh... I would say senior year of high school. Someone asked me to take pictures for the yearbook, some sports photos, and just a little bit of everything. The school had, I took photography in school. They had a 35 millimeter Minolta SRT 201. Started playing around with that. Um, so using film in school, we shot some slides on um, regular point and shoot 35 millimeter cameras. So I would say high school is when it kind of started. All right, and so so from there, I, I'm assuming, do we get to uh, your your first stint in photo retail? Right after high school, um, I went to work at Prince Charming Photo Lab, which was a photo lab in Buffalo for the longest time. Um, from there, I bought my first SLR, um, 35 millimeter film SLR off a guy that worked there, a Canon AE-1 program, which I still have, of course. Um, and this was basically my first camera and it's pretty much been Canon ever since. I haven't really used anything since then, and we're talking 1989. So it's been a long time with Canon. And so, so it's been a long time with Canon. What are you, what are you shooting with currently? What are, you, what are your main cameras now? Currently, I use the Canon 5D Mark III. I have a 1DX for the sports. Um, but I would say the 5D Mark III is what I use a lot, more than ever. Okay. Probably the most often used camera I have. Um, in between there, after the film camera, when autofocus came out, I got a Canon EOS 650, put it on layaway at Kmart, not Walmart, Kmart, um, before I had a car to drive to anywhere cool like Delaware Camera. I rode my bike over to Kmart on Walden Avenue and put $50, put the bucks on it and it took me about a month, but then I got it and Autofocus kind of changed everything a little bit back then for me. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, do, do you know the progression? So from the 650, do you know the, the timeline of, of uh, what cameras you went to after that? After the 650, it was, um, well, there's some jumping around. So after the AE-1, I went up to a T90, and the T90 basically had an automatic advance, so I didn't have to no longer advance with my thumb. Um, I had a motor drive for this, but it wasn't as fast. So the T90 was pretty, pretty fast. It was still manual focus. After the T90, it was the 650. And then um, after the 650, there was a 620, a 630. I got both of those. And then when I started doing more sports, I got a EOS 1N, it was called. Um, very similar looking to the newer cameras now. 
And after that, digital, probably 2004 was my first digital camera. That was um, Canon 10D and worked my way up to the 50D and um, until I started doing more professional sports and I started getting a little bit more faster cameras. Awesome. So I, I personally, I don't think of you as a, as much of a gearhead, but um, mirrorless, have you thought about it? Have you played with the, the Canon R or are you, is it in the- I haven't. Um, if I were to go mirrorless, it would probably have to be Canon. I just used to it for so many years. I don't know if I would ever switch over. I know people that have switched over, but if I were to do mirrorless, it would definitely be the Canon. I, I saw a guy just yesterday actually using it, and it looked pretty cool, but I'm old school, and it took me a while just to start digital, as opposed to going from film to digital was a big leap for me, anyways, because I was so used to the dark room and doing all that, but um, I think if I would try, I don't know. I, I still, I'm just still, I like to look through the viewfinder and not have a digital viewfinder. It's just, it's a personal preference. A lot of the newer photographers like the mirrorless. It's just what they're used to because that's what they grew into. What, I when, start when, off with this. I start off with this thing. So there's a lot of improvements from what I went through. The progression's a lot different than nowadays. Um, yeah. But I, I'm probably going to stick with what I have. So when, when the R5 comes, we will definitely make sure we get one of those in your hands. And I think that may sway you a little bit. That looks like it's going to be a beast. Yeah, I've heard good things. And I'm not opposed to not doing it. I mean, obviously, the technology is, you can't avoid it. It's going to be there. But I, I would try it for sure. Cool. So, Jeff, what, uh, what piece of gear changed the way you shoot the most? Um, late 90s, right when I started doing more sports photography, I put the money down on a 7200 2.8. This, this lens here, I don't, I've shot thousands of pictures with film and with digital on this. Um, I currently have the newest version of this lens, but I'll never get rid of this. It has like sentimental value. Um, it was the most expensive lens I ever bought at that time. And now it's all beat up, but it's a game changer for sure. The fast lens letting in a lot of light, 2.8 aperture. I use it obviously for the sports, but it was a great lens at weddings. It was good for portraits, anything I needed. This was my go-to lens. Um, of course, I had wide angle and everything, but this lens, I would say, I had on the camera 80% of the time when I first got it. It was my, definitely my number one go-to lens. Uh, all right, and, and today, what is your favorite lens? My favorite lens today, it's really hard to say. It really depends on what I'm doing, but the 24 to 105 Canon, I use specifically for a lot of my landscape photography. Um, for sports, it's all over the place. It's a 7200, it's a 400, 28, and it's a 16 to 35 that I have. Um, do a lot of pictures at the zoo. Those, that's, I have a 100 to 400 for that. So it's really hard to say a favorite. I guess it really depends on what I'm doing. When I was shooting the protest, I had uh, two bodies, a 70, um, 16 to 35 on one and a 100 to 400. Because I don't like to get in someone's face if I don't have to. I, if I use the 400, I could be far enough back and still get a nice close tight shots of hands or, or whatever I need to without invading their space. So you say you, you saw somebody shooting yesterday. Where were you? What were you shooting yesterday? Yesterday I was downtown for the protest, peaceful protest in the square. Um, since been pretty much non-essential these last couple of months, I've just been looking for things to shoot and trying to document the history that's happening right now in, in Buffalo and um, keeping myself busy and occupied by trying to capture moments like that. This, uh, I have never shot a protest in my life and I've done five in the last two months. Yeah, you, 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 we, we shared and, and I, I've commented before the, your shots of the, the protests uh, last month for the reopening in the square were some of the most powerful images that I certainly, certainly of that protest, the most powerful images that I saw. And I just looked through your uh, images from yesterday and you, you you have the eye and you, you're capturing some great stuff. What, uh, from your, yourself personally, what have been some of the either iconic images or the iconic things that you've seen in the five different protests that you've been shooting? Well, you're definitely seeing how passionate people are. You know, people have their beliefs and, you know, my thing is I'm trying to capture the emotion, rather if it's a 10 year old kid hanging out the window with a sign or, or anyone in the square protesting, you know, 
their point, trying to get their point across. I, I try to capture as things are happening and just the passion that people have doing it. I'm, I've never protested anything in my life, but it's, you can see where the people have the passion and I just try to capture that. Uh, you, you do a good job of it. So uh, something else, again, personally, a, a story that I, I tell about you and uh, is that uh, I knew who my wedding photographer was going to be before I knew who the bride was going to be. And uh, so uh, wedding photography is something that you've done for 30... 92. 1992 was my first, first year doing weddings. All right. I don't do as many as I used to do. I still enjoy doing them. I mean, it's capturing someone's day that you really can't make mistakes. You really don't get a second chance at it. Um, well, you get a second chance if that person gets remarried and they hire you again. That's happened a few times. So I don't, you know, recommend that, but I'm here for you. Um, yeah, I just don't do it as much. I mean, there's a lot more competition, I guess you could say. Photography, obviously, as we all know, has changed a bit over the past few years with, you know, how, I don't want to say easy, but it's become a little bit easy for a lot of people to pick up the camera and, you know, just do it more. I mean, there were 20 years ago, there was 50 wedding photographers in Buffalo. Now there's 500. So it's a little bit different. I, I don't I go out there and advertise myself. I, I like the, to have references of people I worked with in the past, personal referrals. So I'm still around to do them if, if, about, if needed. Yeah, the, the, the barrier to entry to become a photographer is lower, right? It's yes. It's 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 still difficult. Wedding photography, as you say, you you don't you don't really get a second chance, and it's no. important and critical, and so it's it's still difficult. One of the other areas where you certainly have uh, shown your skills is in your sports photography. Um, that's another one. So you that you you started that you said in high school, or uh, yeah, I would say sports was definitely high school shooting for the yearbook um, and. Did a lot of, I worked for a couple of newspapers, um, like the B group newspapers. And I would say the late nineties, when I started working for sports and leisure magazine, that opened up a lot of doors. It wasn't a big paying job, but it got my foot in the door. I met a lot of people and any sports job I have now, it was basically because I started working for that paper. Um, so it didn't work out back then. You know, I used to get yelled at for doing things for not necessarily free, but almost free but it opened up a lot of doors and it gave me a lot of connections working for the Associated Press right now as a freelancer. I never would have got that without the people that referred me that I met through doing the work for sports and leisure magazine. Um, so that was a big, that was a big thing. Unfortunately, the magazine business, obviously for local isn't, I mean, there's one newspaper now, there isn't as many papers to work for. So it's a little bit harder to get into it. I feel. So uh, any sporting events or anything that, that you would consider highlights of your career from just from a sports photography standpoint? No, I mean, I, I mean, I love shooting the NFL games and college games, but you, you get the same almost thrill when you're shooting a, a high school game. You know, it's just the, the action and, you know, how people respond. Um, I try not to shoot an NFL game any different than I would shoot a college or a high school game. Try to keep it, you know, very similar photos. Obviously, the spectacle of professional sports is great. Um, but no, I mean, I, I try to treat all sports very, very equal to each other. But I mean, the paying through the Associated Press, they only, you know, use me for professional sports and, and um, some college things as well. Awesome. So, all right, where can we find you? Where can we find your work uh, online in person? Well, currently you can find me in my house because that's kind of where I'm confined to still, I think. Um, I have a store in the Eastern Hills Mall that I sell a lot of my landscape photography. Unfortunately, that has not been open yet. I'm not sure what phase that is, three or four, I'm not even sure. Um, so just basically laying low right now until we can get out there officially and call ourselves a professional paying photographer again. Um, so right now it's just me doing what I like to do. The great thing is it's a job and a hobby. So I'm not bored. I'm out shooting landscapes or doing protests or whatever I can do. Basically keep sharp, I guess you can say. Awesome. All right, Jeff, uh, yes. Jeffrey, Jeffrey T. Barnes Photography. Thank you for joining us. Um, you. And I know we'll continue to see you around. Sounds good.